again practicing hopefully trying not to make erroneous moves what it what is it that makes us do the wrong things so there's no point going here no point going here with the bishop either so are we locking in our bishop yep okay so let's lock in the bishop we can play that way so that means now a different style a different method different way of thinking What do we like? Well, yes, we do like maybe getting the bishop out and doing this side of things here, but we don't have a problem working the other way as well. So it's being comfortable with what we're used to. Playing this way, for me personally, it gives the opponent that little bit of, a st if they play it right, it gives them a little bit more edge in terms of being able to attack the centre and manage the centre. So we're sort of on the back foot. But with them playing a little bit timid here, I think we might have clawed that time back. And it only takes one move to really give you that time back, that tempo back. So it's almost like a mirror effect that they've gone with here. Very timid. So I'm happy with that. Oh, and the, yeah, that's fine. Let's castle. So there shouldn't be too much problems in this game based off of these slight tiny openings that the opponent's done. So I shouldn't really make too many errors in this game just based off of these early openings. So now we want to be looking at really jumping into the mid game. Openings done, castling's done, King's feeling fairly safe, we've got some company. So now transition, hopefully mid, mid game to end game, mid end, mid end game. That's the ideal thing, scenario that all chess players want. They don't really want to do a mid-game thing. They just want to get to the end game and get it over and done with. But with our system, we don't want to rush it. I'm going to go for the box shape here. And because I'm familiar with this type of way of working, I don't feel too worried about that. So I'm going to take with the knight. This it feels like sort of old school chess play that I'm familiar with like I said I shouldn't really have too much trouble uh, in this sort of scenario I'm going to take the pawn here so it should be simplified for us so we're looking to win the, keep those tempos going I'm just going to bring the knight around here attacking the bishop attacking the queen so I'm not rushing it, it's just looking at the position. I'm very familiar with the position. And it might look funny because I've got these pieces on the back, but the opponent needs to develop their pieces as well. They've not yet castled, so they're going to have to move their piece again. Probably moving it back here or in front of the king. Which gives us time to manoeuvre our pieces, get our pieces out into the game. Yep. So I've got to bring this bishop here. Kind of holding the bishop to ransom, so you think, oh, he's not not going to be able to move. So win a little bit of tempo there. I'm going to bring the knight across. Only one I'm always concerned about is this bishop in this sort of position. So it usually ends up with the knight coming here, pushing the pawn here, going for maybe the Fianchetto line, depending on the situation. As you know, I don't like Fianchetto. But we have to find a place for the bishop. So currently they've got two pieces on the back. They're worried about this pawn here now because it's been held to ransom. So the rook's probably going to move off of the line. Would be nice and tasty to push this pawn here to just bring the bishop here and attack the rook. So that's another position that potentially could take place. It's always really nice to have an opening type pattern that you're really familiar with and you feel so comfortable with that almost you could do it with the eyes shut i can't do blindfold chess so um i wouldn't be able to do it with my eyes shut but you just have a general feel for how the opponent potentially can respond or will respond and these minute details of keeping the bishop to ransom here because of this pawn small details but they've not, they had plenty of time, didn't I just, as you could see, and we were talking about this bishop holding this pawn to ransom. 
So you would never have thought that they would have made the bishop move. So that's the next thing there, obviously. Take the rook off the ball, bishop takes. This player definitely is not playing. Oh, well, we'll claim victory on that. 15-10. Put some practice in. Let's see what we have got. I'm going to let the bishop fly. Let's get this bishop out. In this session, just definitely just looking at what is what potentially mistakes are we making just to try and avoid it. Sometimes you just can't because it's the way that you play. It's just a natural, natural progression of moves. And let's attack the bishop. Keep it dirt simple. Let's take with the queen. Probably expecting the drop. Doing a bit of research, looking at some of the um, old games that the Masters have played. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. And I'm always bemused by, you know, where they're just whipping stuff off the board, doing like gambits and stuff. And then you realise why they've done the gambit. But it's all based on how the opponent does actually react in the game. Because gambits are really quite dangerous if the opponent responds appropriately then that gambit kind of loses your tempo loses your position and it's not really very good for you but it all depends on what the opponent does if the opponent responds in kind and they accept the gambit too much then their position is fraught and they're spending time chasing their tail because they're not developing the other pieces so the main thing for me around gambits is for the opponent to lose tempo in developing their pieces. It's really quite tasty to go, yeah, I'm getting a, you feel like you're getting a free piece. Yes, you are. But is it at the detriment of your position, detriment of your piece development? And that's the key thing to kind of always remember when it looks free, sometimes it, it just isn't. So I'm going to castle. So we could have taken the gambited thing there, but we're cho choosing today just to have a look at what it is that potentially we might, we might be starting to do wrong. And there's nothing wrong with taking the gambited pawn because we know how to deal with it when you capture it. But it's based on what we know so far. I mean, they've taken here, the queen could take. But what does that knight want to do? This knight wants to come here and own the show. So it's still going to go there because it will be attacking the pawn as well as the queen. So that is a key thing to note in this particular game. And is there anything that I can do to change that? Not really, because I have to, I'm more to set now to either take with the pawn or take with the queen. Knight jumps into here. It's a nice position. Our queen really doesn't have any other spaces to jump to because it's got this guarded with the knight. So the queen would be probably coming back to here it can't come here and even if we take with the pawn the queen is still going to have to come back to here do like the pawn being there because it kind of stops the knight from jumping here even though this pawn is so i'm going to take with the pawn and then just move the queen back so smallest of details where we're looking at what potentially has gone wrong and you could say, well, potentially this is wrong because now the knight is owning this area. But all we're thinking of is bringing the knight around here. If he doesn't capture, then a smaller piece is going to be attacking their knight. So was it worth their knight going into that space? At the moment, the queen's not getting into here. So are they looking to start championing down with the pawns? So that's the picture that we're looking at at the minute. I think they will just go run and castle, which will give us time to just attack the knight. But the problem with attacking the knight is this. The knight is looking for this pawn. 
And if this knight comes here, the knight is blocking the pawn. So is there something we need to do in the meantime, potentially attacking their knight, so that we can then push the pawn onto their knight? So we're going to grab here. Maybe this pawn should have come here to stop our knight from jumping here. So that might have been something that the opponent oversaw. So the idea is to try and pressure this knight away. They may not take with their knight. They might just go, well, I'll just... Um, but they have. So taking with the bishop probably is a bit of a no-no because the pawn is just going to drop. So we'll take with the pawn. They do have this, so they'll probably be putting pressure on our bishop. Just looking at the things that they could do to disrupt us. And then we we'll come back here, so then it's looking to uh, disrupt our pawn structure again. But we'll gladly open up because the rook then is starting to work its magic on this file here. So those are the things that we can see. Pawn coming here, knight coming here, knight takes, open up, and then we can attempt to double up. So they're not doing that just yet, so we're going to hit the knight to see what it wants to do. Does it want to take the pawn and the queen take it? Or does it, it can't go back here? Can go back here because it invites the queen in front of our king. Can also go here, don't, if, don't forget that. It's not coming here because it'll get taken. So probably it's gone, it's gone back. So it's actually running, which is good for us. But our position is not the best, but we're circumventing. It's looking to do a whirlwind with the knight. But the pawn is blocking quite nicely here at the moment. We could bring our rook across facing their queen. But this pawn is going to be unprotected and the queen's going to come shooting down. I think they're probably looking at doing a whirlwind of some sort and getting a 2 on one on the pawn. So the queen comes here, the knight's here, it's got a 2 on one on the pawn here. That's what I think is probably going to happen. So we could move the rook here, attacking their pawn, giving them something to think about in the meantime. Our pawn, rook can't come and protect the pawn anyway. The only thing that can really is this bishop. So we do have options. We can push the pawn, but it does have a two on one with the knight and the pawn. So the pawn could take, but our queen couldn't take back, but the pawn could. Or he pushes down. So he could go here and pushes down and there's only one piece that's protecting. So it'll be a pawn for a pawn. Queen comes down and then the rook can potentially come across and attack the queen. So let's have a look because we don't want this bishop stuck here. It's going to get challenged. Let's give this a try. Because we won't be able to defend if the knight and the queen come here to attack the pawn. So we have to try and do something different. Even if we're a pawn down, at least maybe the rooks may be able to own the file in the centre. Because the queen will be there in the centre. And it might almost be jammed in there. But we shall see. Ah, oh, the queen's moved. It's not, it's, well, it's still focusing, I think. It's got a little bit of a checkeroonie on our queen, king here. Could bring our queen up. Then obviously he's looking to come down here and attack the pawn. The pawn. But we do have space now with the bishop to be able to protect. But their rooks are going to come over and take charge. And then we're going to have to bring our rook here. Hmm. Interesting. The king out of the way. Or do we x-ray through? I'm liking the x-ray through. Because uh, the knight doesn't have any protection on it. So I'm actually going to go with the x-ray through, protecting the king. So if they are planning on coming here, we can take the knight off the board. If they're planning to take, we can take... Oh, no, we've lost the pawn there. Yeah, so they take, we take, the knight takes, is on our queen, but we can take his queen for free. So that might work to our benefit. But they're a slow mover, so I don't think they're going to fall for that. You never know, though. It can happen. I think a rook's coming here to 
support something or I don't know what they're going to do really. Moves the queen, no, that's not going to help. Takes, takes, so it's an even exchange. Oh, the knight can come for the rook, but he'll lose his queen either way because the queen's got no support. So nothing to get bent out of shape over. So I think a rook is coming to the center because I think we're probably just going to take. So the queen move did get a little bit of a response. Could have even brought the bishop here. Oh, -ho, could have even, can still bring the bishop here. Because it's a two on one, but the pawn's going to drop down. So I'm going to take, like we said. And we can still think about bringing the bishop here, attacking the knight. Because if the pawn takes, it's doubling the pawns, and we've got double pawns there as well. Did actually show that move of the queen going back, but I didn't think that was what they're going to do. But I think they're looking to drive the pawn down. So they do take. Is there anything else? Rook could come across, but we want to just continue with this maneuver. We're expecting that. So the pawn takes. So he's got like a little bit of a cluster of pawns in the center ish. Again, the rook could come and defend. So there's no great shakes, really. Bring the rook here attacking, so then this other rook has to come and defend. They're really going into the tank. Okay, so they've gone with doubling the pawns. Right, so we can now look to see if the rook can come in the center, just attacking this pawn. It's got no protection. Easily defended, obviously. And then, not sure about this rook coming here. So it's not really going anywhere, is it? But I think I'll still do that, just for, just for move's sake. Rooks like the open files. If there's an exchange, then the queen's going to be owning this file, so we have to be careful. But this pawn would be kind of free if that did happen. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's bring this second one here, like we said. Don't want to overthink something that doesn't really need overthinking. Rooks like the open files. If there's an exchange, we know this pawn is weak. He may look to sort of push this pawn, takes, takes, takes that situation. Or they may just go for one of those intermediate moves like a king move here or a basic pawn move here or one of the pawns moving down. I'm not sure they'll go for that. Mind you, they could do because this rook can take. It's just that they'll lose this pawn or they lose this pawn if the queen takes. Well, they're going challenging in the centre. So we haven't really looked at that pattern per se, but I don't think it's that bad. So we'll grab. We might be a pawn down, but it looks even. We've taken. They take back. So they're just further elevating the pawn down the board. This might be where this rook comes into play, attacking this pawn here. So I'm going to bring this rook here, just attacking this pawn. 
This pawn's looking for something meaty to get hold of so he can get our queen. But luckily it's got support. Better stop clicking. It's got support of the rook so it can push. So you'd think that this rook would come and defend, which then takes away the protection from the queen. And they may forget themselves and push and we can get the queen for free. Or do they simply push the pawn down? If they push the pawn down, there's three pieces on this pawn. We've got a queen, rook, and the rook, and they've only got two protecting. Our king doesn't have much of a flight squared, but it's something. So, oh, we've just said that, haven't we? So I'm going to take with the rook. I don't think I need to overthink that, unless I'm falling for a pattern that I've missed. I didn't think they'd do that actually. But they've got an advanced pawn, so we have to still be a little bit wary about what's actually happening here. And our king is a little bit jammed in, blocked by our queen. Is there some magic? Is there some of this business going on? Some if there is, we can just take the rook off the board and we win the rook. So I think they have to take. No, they don't have to actually, sorry, they don't have to. They could move the rook here, they could move the rook there. Yeah, they don't have to be compliant with that. I think they have to be careful though if they are moving the rooks here to protect this because we get a check on the king and we win the queen. I think the most basic thing is this, that makes us have to work. Maybe we'll take with the queen, they take back, rook takes, rook then comes and, oh, they've gone for it. So I'm going to see if they're going to exchange or not. It's a 10 second increment as well, so can't really rely on them running out of time. And they have actually captured, so there may be something that we have missed with that long thought process they've just had. Is it dancing backwards and forwards when they come and attack around here? So we go there, we go there, they go here. If we move the king, he's going to be too quick because he's got the support, so he'll get the pawn. So maybe we don't do that. But that is pressure on this pawn, and my rook can't defend. So I should then just go here. Because if he then comes down, oh no, mind you, it's going to be too fast. Check. Up. We can take. That's okay. That's okay. Here. Here. Check. King up. Rook up. Does it come here? It don't matter, does it? Comes there. Take. Even if it goes across, it's defended. But it's not done any of that. So a simple defense with the pawn. Now, is it simple? So we push up. Then he pushes down, trying to get it. Push here, go for a replication. He starts pushing down. Let's just support the pawn. There's nothing else we can do really on that side. So it's just going to give a, these are, looks like distraction maneuvers now. He's really focused on this pawn. He wants to get this pass, but I'm treating these as distraction maneuvers. So he's wanting to win the tempo. Yes, okay, so he's attacking. Yeah, you see, if we take, then obviously it just comes running down here. And he's got our pawn and our rook's not set yet. Ooh, annoying, annoying. So we could bring the rook here. 
and then come down. But then he's going to be defending that forever. Or we could just come here. He takes. Hmm. I don't know. Coming here seems okay. He takes, takes, and then we've got a passer. So he's got. But then he does have this pawn here. How's I get my king across? I'm just going with this. I don't want to take too long over it. I think it's obvious that I need to go here. But that might win him that tempo that we talked about with him coming down here. So if he goes there, we can drop. And if he does the stuff again, we can still take. King's getting involved. Do we get the rooks off the board? No, because I'll have to give up my pawn. Do I get the, move my king across so that we at least we're near this pawn? Or do I have time to come down and attack their pawn? Mm -hmm. I'm going to move the king. Yeah, all this distraction work. I mean, it's working because we have to do something about it. I'm going to push the pawn, like we said, in the early part of this distraction work. See, I'm not sure about bringing the king here because that stops my rook from coming here. So I get away with coming here. Although I suppose we could just go like that. Hmm. But then he can come all the way down and come around the back for these pawns and the king's too far in the middle. Things to consider. And I don't need to move fast. I mean, just because their time's running down, I've got 12 minutes to think of my next move, you know? So let's use that calculation time wisely. Okay, so they're off and could take with the rook. I think I'm really wanting to take with the pawn just to keep things busy, but positionally, I don't know if we're going to be, we're closer to this pawn. So in essence, I think this pawn could get past. Yeah, so if we take... I'm assuming the rook's going to take, unless of course they're getting a bit arty, but still, we're still going to have a supporting pawn. It doesn't have to exchange, that's the thing. So what I don't want to do is take, and then I lose that tempo of them doing something. Coming across here, we can still come here to attack. So then if he does drop, then we will be able to do the same thing. So I'm going to, oh, before I do that, yeah, so take up. There, take, king comes down for the pawn, king comes up, king takes the pawn, we move across to take, get this pawn, so the king's going to be here, okay, let's do it, I know it took a while, but sometimes you one square out and you, your timing's totally messed up. Happened to me one time in one over the board game. Just mistimed it by one move. And I did the calculation and everything in my head. I thought it was right. I think he's going there. If he goes there, we're on to a winner. For sure. And I've done the timing, so I think we're on to a winner either way. <gasps> oh, crap. Oh, okay, I didn't envisage that. But the pawns can fight the fight themselves. Tempo-wise, they're going to have to go, uh, 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 uh. And we want to be trying to get across here now and start pushing this baby up. He might be able to block it. It's gone down. 
Let's go. Let's go. One, two, three, four. He's got about five moves, maybe six to get his pawn down to promotion. King has to move. It's more than six actually. These can be tricky. Need to get the king involved. No preemptives. No preemptives. Just wait for them to make a move. Don't preempt a thing. It spoils your game. What's that? Hope I don't stalemate him. Don't preempt, get your finger off the damn mask. <laughs> Maybe a pawn move. That just helps us. Interesting game, very smooth. Yeah, from start to finish, very smooth. Um, happy with the way we maneuvered our pieces and we talked through each of the stages uh, from the opening, mid game, end game, and just slowly but surely just working the pieces together a little bit at a time because it is about teamwork and just taking advantage of those weak, weak squares, weak spaces, and overall, taking advantage of the, the best positions on the board because we're not a tactical type of thing. We tried to also block off the blind spots that were could occur quite easily and really sort of stop the opponent's attacking processes as best possible. And that's the only way we got through this game is looking at what could they potentially do to us and see whether or not we could improve on our position.